the Psalms has 150 chapters and the psalmist who compiled it has divided it into five books and we have taken time to study them book by book. In book one, we went through from verse chapter 1 to chapter 42. We saw that 37 of them are the Psalms of David and it describes for us how the Lord enabled his servant that the nation of Israel may be established as a nation for the glory of God. In the establishment of the nation of Israel, you would see that there were the vicissitudes of challenges that the psalmist has to go through. So in book 1, we saw 37 of the 42 psalms having the pen name of David who has written this psalm to describe the many circumstances that he has gone through in order to do the will of God, how the Lord was with him and how the Lord through his writing shows us the inner working of God in the heart of a man faced with many inextricable challenges that plague the human soul against wickedness, against opposition in high places. We thank the Lord that He was able to record it in the first 42 Psalms and from chapter 40, uh, Psalm 43 onwards to Psalm 72. We saw there the nation of Israel establishing itself and how, again, you see uh, David writing many of the Psalms, describing the very ex experience that he has with God, showing to us that it is the will of God that we be his people and that he be our God. He made a covenant with David that he would establish the kingdom of Israel for his glory and for his honour. And you see the development of it in the verses leading to chapter Psalm 72, whereby it was written a psalm for Solomon, how worship was established in Israel from the description of the vicissitudes of trouble that was facing a man, you see him now going towards establishing stability in the kingdom of God by establishing worship in the house of God. And you would see that the psalmist shows us how important it is for the worship of God, that the people of God ought to be gathered together to meet with God, to find strength from Him. And you would see the Lord showing it from in book 3, from Psalm 73 to Psalm 89. You would see there the psalmist praising God for bringing and establishing worship in the land, in his house. And from Psalm 90 onwards to Psalm 106, book 4, you would see here Israel uh, going into exile. And the psalmist is meet to describe for us, beginning with Moses, because it was Moses who brought Israel into the promised land. It was Moses whom God had chosen to lead his people to walk with him. And Moses wrote in Psalm 90 and verse 1, Lord, 
Thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. God came and dwelt mightily with men. When God brought Israel out of Egypt, what did God do? He established worship in the wilderness. He showed them how they can meet with Him in the construction of the tabernacle that points to Christ, how man can approach God. And you see how the camp uh, was structured so that right in the middle was the tabernacle and Israel surrounding the tribes. When they look inside, they see the presence of God with them. And outside, they see the barren wilderness. They see death. They see nothingness. When we have God with us, they saw the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. God's presence with His people. God manifests Himself visibly to His people so that we can know and understand that the God who created us has condescended to meet with His people. But as you read the psalm, you would realize that there is a straying away of God's people. Because our text tells us in verse 1, Lord, Thou art our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever they formed, Thou hast formed the earth, the world, even from everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest men to destruction, verse 3, and says, Return, ye children of men. God being our dwelling place, He being the source of life, He is being the sustenance of life. But there in verse 3, you see men straying away from God and Moses writing to beckon to men, return, come back to Him from your wandering away from Him. When we wander away from God, there is no life in that wandering. And unless we are connected with Him, and unless we would dwell with Him, life would be very miserable. And so Moses wrote, verse 5, Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourishes and it groweth up. And in the evening it is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed by thy anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Men stray away from God. And when man is strayed away from God, you realize that as Adam and Eve left paradise, the age of man began to fall, isn't it? Right from the time of Adam and his descendants, they were living up to 800, 900 years old. But by the time we reach Noah in Genesis chapter 6, you'll find that the age of man has gone down to 120 years old. And up to now, we could not break that 120-year-old burial. Man strayed away from God. And as a result of his sin, man has to die. And he has no solution against that. And in every family, in every people, in every nation, we come face to face with the reality, isn't it? That we are so finite. Moses tells us of the brevity of life. That this life indeed has no guarantee And this physical life, indeed, is but transient. He tells us, for all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told 
The days of our years are three score years and ten, if by reason of strength they be four score years. Yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Is there no solution to man's wandering away from God and the cutting short of his life? You know, from the beginning, man wanted to find a way to have everlasting life to continue to exist. But he went the wrong way, couldn't find the way. But in the Lord is everlasting life, dear friends. In the Lord is everlasting life. When we have him, we have life. And so Moses plead with the people of God, verse 13, Oh, return, O Lord, how long? Let it repent thee concerning thy servants. Come and meet with us. Let thy people return to thee. How they have strayed away from thee. Verse 14. Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. When we have the Lord with us, When the mercy of God comes upon us, the mercy of God consists of two words, His goodness and His kindness. The goodness and the kindness of God manifest in the life of His people. What is good? What is truly good comes from God and the opposite is evil. The opposite is wickedness. The opposite of it is death. Whereas with the Lord is goodness. With Him is kindness and with Him is life. How men who stray from God find life without life. And this was the uh, key thought that would run through this set of psalms. And if you look at the last psalm, in Psalm 106, we would have there in description for us the wandering and straying of Israel from the Lord. How sad it is. And it describes the psalm there Israel, who have wandered from God, seeking to come back to God. Psalm 106 verse 6 says, We have sinned with our fathers. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. With God, we said, it's goodness and kindness. But without God, you see, is violence. Without God, you see, is wickedness, is debauchery, is sin, in iniquity. That's the word there. The word iniquity is another word to describe sin. It is the word that means crooked, crooked, bending. There are three words in the Old Testament that describe sin there. The first word is sin itself. It means missing the mark of God's standard, God's law. And second is the word transgression. And that is the word that means real rebellion from God, turning away from God. And the third is the outworking of sin in the life of God's people, the word iniquity, a crooked way, crooked way. And so how can the crooked life be made straight? How can we learn to deal honestly, to live righteously, to work acceptably and unblameably in the sight of God when we would come back to God, isn't it? When we would stop our wandering and like the prodigal son, Come to himself and say, 
in my father's house. There is enough for me. And yet, here, after he has squandered all of the Lord's inheritance, he had nothing to put body and soul together. When we are estranged from God, that's where our life becomes very miserable. Only when we are connected with God, there is life. And how can man be connected with God? It is through the worship of God. That is why or when you look at Psalm 106, you would turn back to Psalm 91 to help us to see that while men stray away from God, that's no good. But the way by which men will find strength is to abide in God. And that's our memory verse in Psalm 91 verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my fortress, He is my refuge, my God, in Him will I trust. Will you trust God? The man who trusts God, who dwells with God, he will find God indeed, His safety, His security. He will be a refuge for His people, a fortress. In other words, the enemy cannot overtake Him, cannot overwhelm Him. He may be tried, He might be pressed, but He will not be broken because it is the Lord that shields Him and protects Him. And so the psalmist says, Surely he will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. What's the fowler? The fowler is a, is a trap for birds. Right? The bird, innocent bird, not knowing there's a trap there. You see some food there and yet it is a trap. So they go in and try to bite and there they are snared. So the evil one, Make many snares, many traps, many booby traps, many landmines for the people of God. But it is the Lord that protects His people. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. God's Word shows us, leads us the way to go. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Danger, isn't it? We live in a, in a world that is full of danger. But with the Lord, as you commit your life to Him, He has that power to take care of you. He has that power to, to keep you. Because He is the Almighty God. He is infinite, eternal, unchangeable in His power. And so He says, nor the pestilence that walketh in the darkness, nor the destruction that wasteth by noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy sight, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. The Lord will deal with the wicked, but for the people of God, He will take care. He will protect them. And the people of God can trust that He will Indeed do so, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. Verse 10 says, There shall no evil before thee, neither shall any plague come thy, thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways, the angels of God. Isn't it so true? When Peter was in prison after he preached the gospel, who came to rescue him? It was the angel who came. It was a heavily guarded prison. He was in chains, but the angel got in and the angel loosed him. And before long, he was knocking on the door of the disciples who were gathering, praying unceasingly for the servant of God. And God has miraculously delivered the angel of God ministering spirits to take care of us you see God does hear 
Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Dear friends, do you know the name of God? Do you name the name of God? Do you call upon the name of God? Is he first always? If he is first always and you dwell with him, then he will surely take care of you. He will call upon me, verse 15 of Psalm 91 says, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honour him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. The preservation of God. Who can keep our life except the Lord, isn't it? And the psalmist knew it. And how is it that we can renew our strength Psalm 92 tells us it was a psalm or song for the Sabbath day. Israel, when they have established the kingdom, they have established worship. The temple was built from David to Solomon. David prepared, Solomon built. And David organized the singers, organized the Levites, so that worship will be in order. And there you would see the people of God meeting with God on the Sabbath day. The day of rest. The day that God called very good because He has completed all His work. What did God do in six days? We learn in our 7 a.m. service this week. What did God do? Well, He created everything good for us, placed us in the garden and have us to have dominion over everything that He has created so that we would enjoy the paradise that God has made for us to have communion, to have fellowship with Him. How blessed, how wonderful it is for His people. And God rested the sixth day. And so six days we labour Six days, the, God, the Lord will take care of us as we go out into the world, as the Lord sent us forth to his, be His ambassadors, how His power will dwell with us so that it will be every week with the Lord a good week. In fact, the next week would be better with the Lord as we draw closer to Him, to walk with Him. And the Lord shows to us indeed that as we worship Him, as we come before Him, we would find strength for life. So the Sabbath day was very good because the people of God were able to rest on that day and behold the goodness of the Lord, to remember what God had done for us throughout the week. If we have not been walking with God, then there's not much excitement, isn't it, to come to the house of God, to meet with Him on the Lord's day. But if we have been with the Lord and He has been dwelling with us, then the Lord's day is indeed a very great highlight of the week that we would gather together because we have experienced the goodness of the Lord. And the Sabbath day is very good because there we rest from our labour and there we come and give thanks to God. So Psalm 92, you would see the psalmist says, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, to sing praises unto the Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery and upon the harp with a solemn sound, we have good accompanying music so that the words of hymns sung to music would comfort, soothe our heart, give us strength so that we would be mentally attuned, strengthened in the heart, in the mind. And the psalmist tells us, that as we worship God, God is in our midst. And as we worship Him, 
He sent forth His glory, His power to accomplish His holy purpose as His people walk with Him and serve Him. The, the psalmist described, For lo, thy enemies, O Lord, for lo, thy enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. When we come to the Lord, the Lord anoints us, refresh us, strengthen us again as we come to worship Him. And you see, as you go back to Psalm 106, you would see a description of something quite different. Israel in their sin, Israel in their transgression, from 6 to verse 39. You see the sin of discontent when Israel was in the wilderness, verse 13 of Psalm 106. And they soon forget his works. They waited not for his counsel. Now we are a forgetful people. But lasteth exact, exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the wilderness. And God gave them their request, but God sent leanness unto their soul. They lasted exceedingly in the wilderness. They did not wait upon God. You see, in the wilderness, what did God do for them? God provided for them. God gave them manna in the wilderness. Food. Otherwise, they would have starved to death in the wilderness, isn't it? And God wants us to see that without Him feeding us, we would all be dead men. Only with Him feeding us. That's where we have life. Can we see it? And as you review through Psalm 104, you would see how the Lord is the one who feeds even the animals in the field, the wild animals. Verse 27 of Psalm 104 says, These wait all upon thee, that thou mayest give them their meat in due season, that thou givest them they gather, Thou openest thy hand, they are filled with good. God openeth his hand and we are filled with good. Thou hidest thy face, verse 29 says, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die and return to the dust. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created and thou renewest the face of the earth. The Lord, the Lord, he is the one that giveth life. But for Israel, you remember when they were established in the promised land, when all the enemies were taken away, that was a time when they did not worship God. In fact, they went a-whoring. They went wandering away from God. That is what is described in Psalm 106, verse 39. The first section of Psalm 106 from verse 6 onwards to verse 39 or 38 describes how they were wandering away from God in the wilderness. But from verse 39 onwards, it describes how they became wayward in the promised land. When they had their vineyards, when they had their olive trees, when God blessed them, that's where they turn away from Him. Verse 39 of Psalm 106 says, Thus were they defiled their own works and went a whoring after their own inventions. What did they do? They began to turn away. And what did they do? Well, they began to worship. Worship the golden calf. The calf that feeds on the grass. Is that a worthy animal? Well, men exalted the calf and worship that calf that feedeth. 
on grass. Oh, how sad it is that man would stray away from God. Verse 19 of Psalm 106. They made a calf in Horeb and worshipped the molten image. Thus they changed their glory into a similitude of an ox that eateth grass. That's the trouble with men, isn't it? You look at Wall Street, what do you see there? The bull, isn't it? Why did they put the bull there? They worship it. That's the Baal. The God of prosperity. But that's not the living and true God. Why are we worshipping those? The people of God straying away from God. How sad it is. So when Israel has established worship in the land, what did they do? Well, they were supposed to come to God on the Sabbath day to worship Him, lay down from their labor. Not only the Sabbath day, but the Sabbath year. They were to serve God in the Sabbath day and every six year, they would till their ground and on the seventh year, they are to, to rest the land. The land is supposed to be followed. So on the sixth year, they would, they would receive their harvest and then they would stop. They would not plant their crop on the seventh year. That was the seventh year rest that God has granted to them. So that on the seventh year, they would stop and then they have to wait for the eighth year to plant their crop and only after the end of the season on the eighth year will they receive the crop. Why did God give the Sabbath law, the Sabbath year? So that the people of God would understand and know that it is God who has given them their increase. But what happened in Israel? They did not observe the Sabbath year from the time they entered the promised land. And for 490 years, they missed observing the Sabbath year 70 times. And so God drove them out of the land for 70 years. They were 70 years in captivity in Babylon because they regarded not the Lord. Dear friends, we have a God who loves us, who cares for us, who sustains us, but also He wants us to know, indeed, in, in response to what He is doing for us, to at least acknowledge Him, isn't it? And so you would see, as you read through Psalm 92, Psalm 93, uh, you would be able to see how the Lord reigneth amongst His people. That God reigneth not just in Israel, but God reigneth throughout the whole earth. He is King, He is Lord over the whole earth and you can trust Him to take care of you. When you are, when you are facing any injustice, God will undertake to help you. Psalm 94, O Lord, verse 1, To whom vengeance belong, O God, to whom vengeance belong. Show thyself, lift up thyself, thou judge of the earth. God is the judge of the earth. Render a reward to the proud. And the psalmist helps us to see, indeed, that God is the one that would deal justly for His people. And Psalm 95, O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make joyful noise. Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving. You see, the psalmist keep seeking for the people to come and worship Him while the people were seeking to stray away from Him, going after the, all these material things that they think would give them satisfaction. 
would establish things for life. But he realized that it is not that, isn't it? It is the Lord that gives us his increase. Promotion cometh neither from the east nor the west, for the south, but cometh from the north, from the Lord himself. He is the one that setteth up one and putteth down another. So the Lord wants us to get connected with Him, to not wander from Him. And how can we do so? By focusing on the worship of Him. We have started the 7 a.m. service and I would encourage you to make an appointment with the Lord for this early morning hour. It would require some adjustment, some discipline, some sacrifice on your part. But I say to you that it is worth it that you may be able to gather before the people of God in worship, or be before God in worship, and you would find the refreshing that God will give you as you seek the Lord. And Psalm 97, 98, 99 describes altogether the reign of the Lord in the lives of His people. God reigns. God reigns. And you would realize that the people of God who loved Him, who served Him, who walked with Him, these are the people that the Lord Himself will dwell with. But those who have wandered from the Lord, ah, you would see, as the nation of Israel was, they suffered greatly the sin of discontentment verse 13 to 15 from Psalm 106 the sin of jealousy they were jealous of Moses and they staged a revolt in Israel and how the Lord caused the ground to open up and swallow up the gainsayers and the sin of idolatry, we saw, they built the golden calf from verse 19 to 23. The sin of unbelief, not trusting God while they were in the wilderness. You see, the that's the trouble with us, isn't it? What is the meaning of the word trust? The word trust is to rely on the inexhaustible resources of God. The inexhaustible resources of God Will you not take hold of? And you will take hold of our own wisdom, which is pittance that will always disappoint you. Why do you want to go that way? In verse 28 to 31, the sin of apostasy, Numbers 25. The sin of insurrection, verse 20, 32 to 33. The sin of apostasy, verse 28 to 31. You see how they were unfaithful. But the Lord continued to be faithful. The Lord did not abandon them. The Lord did not forsake them. So you see, Psalm, the fourth book, ends with Israel in exile. How they were carried away. Verse 47 of Psalm 106. Save us, O Lord, our God, and gather us from among the heathen to give thanks unto thy holy name and to triumph in thy praise. When we would choose to wander away from God, how sad it is when God has established for himself a church, when he has enabled us to have a place of worship and we would not take it seriously. We will not take the Sabbath seriously. We will not be serious to coming to meet with God in His house. We have our own priorities. We would have our tuition on Sundays. Is that setting God right in our hearts? Well, the Lord says to you one day, enough is enough. Enough is enough. 
let not it come to that point when the Lord said to you, enough is enough. And He will cut you off. Do we see, do we understand that our life comes from Him? And we trying to make our own success, is it success? The way brand, the world, as it, they brand the success for you, that's not success. Only in the Lord is true prosperity, is true success, is true peace and true joy. Only in the Lord, in His guidance, in His direction, there is righteousness. That we will not suffer loss. I pray that the people of God would be serious. And the study of the Psalms helps us to see how Israel strayed away from God. The Lord wanted them to come back to Him. Come back to Him. May the Lord help us. Let us pray. Father, we ask that Thou be gracious to strengthen Thy people. Comfort us by Thy grace and thank Thee that we can be gathered in Thy house to worship Thee. Bless this our worship for Thy own honour and glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.